Hi everybody, this is Courtney with Fiber Fox Studios and today we are working on another mosaic in the round. This time we are doing that diamond design in the round and I'm going to be using two colors of the Comfy Classic. I have gold right here in front of you. This is going to be my color B. And for color A, I'm going to use this coral color. So we're going to get started by doing our starting chain. We're going to be working in color A. So for me, that is the coral peachy pink color that you guys are about to see on screen. So we will be chaining in a multiple of 10. And just like in last week's video, I do want to show you guys, we are going to do our starting chain and then join it into the ring. So you're just going to go ahead and chain in multiples of 10. For whatever size project you would like to do, I've got some project ideas down below in the description as well as a link to the Etsy store so you can check that out if you're interested in just purchasing the chart for this. But you don't have to because I'm going to teach you absolutely everything so that you can create whatever you would like using this particular mosaic design. So pause here and come back when you've got your starting chain ready. So I've got my starting chain ready. I did a total of 60 stitches, so six uh, multiples of that 10. And we now have to join this into a ring. So I did a longer chain this time to show you guys like what we need to do without getting it twisted. It was real easy on a small chain to not twist it. So I have a lot longer chain this time. So the one thing I want to watch out for is I want to make sure that nothing is twisted. That right there, twisted. I'm going to bring it back nice and flat. And then what we have to do is bring this one around. So we just kind of, it's easier if you have a flat surface. So bring it on around. And we want to make sure that we're joining to the top of this first chain. So right there, as you can see, that's my very first chain. I want to join to the top of that without twisting any of my work. So that way, my starting chain will be in the correct direction when I start working. And for row around one, all we're going to do is first to join it, we're going to slip stitch. So we're going to bring that loop on through. Now we're going to chain one, and when we're working in the round, since we don't have any plus or extra stitches to skip, we have to make sure we work in each and every stitch so that we maintain our count. So you're going to go back in to the same stitch to complete your single crochet in the back loop. Right there, we're doing it in that same stitch that we slip stitched in. So now this entire round is going to be all single crochets working in the back loop only so you're just going to insert picking up that back loop and keep working all the way around meet back up with me when you're ready to join the end of round one and you are going to move on to round two with me so we're back we're here at the end of round number one and we're about to close this round off and join on our new color so you want to make sure that when you're working this section right here that we ignore this chain one that we did to do our first single crochet. We, it kind of lays down the side here. You don't want to work into that. You want to identify your very first stitch. So you can see that's your first stitch. And we're going to go into the back loop only. Now at this point, we're going to grab our color B. So you need to bring in color B. And we're going to do a little slip knot and join that onto our hook. This yarn's a little blown out. And we're just simply going to pull this on through doing a slip stitch. Now we're going to come back here to the back side of our work and we're going to give color A a little tug to tighten that down. And we'll kind of tug on B to get it back into position. And from here, what we can do is we can do the start of round two, which begins with a um, single crochet in the back loop. So we're gonna chain one, go back into the same exact first stitch that we just slip stitched into. And we're going to do our single crochet there in the back loop. And that's our repeat for this entire row. We're gonna do one single crochet working in that back loop only. 
all the way around and then we'll meet back up to join round two. So you can pause here and we'll be back in just a moment. So now we're moving on to round number three. So we're here at the end of round two and we need to close this round off. So now that we have our joined on color um, A down here on our first row, we're going to be bringing that up because you'll notice we didn't clip any of our yarn. We just have our tails back here. Let me get those out of the way. And we have our two pieces of yarn. So we're going to be bringing that up here to close off the end of round two so to close off we need to identify our first stitch which is that single crochet right there we're ignoring the chain that we did to start the single crochet so we're going to insert right there into the back loop of our first single crochet and now we're going to allow color b to lay over here to the side so you want to bring it over towards your left. Now we want to pick up color A. So we're going to bring up color A. And when we do this, we're naturally crossing over and going to hold down color B. So we're going to grab color A and do our slip stitch to bring it on through and close round two. Now here in the back of our work, we can go ahead and just give a little tug on color B to tighten everything down and then we're going to begin working right here in the same stitch that we just slip stitched into so we're going to begin this round by chaining one and then we can go back here into that same stitch and do our single crochet and remember all of our single crochets are worked in the back loop so we're going to do a total of four of these. So we've done one. So now we need to do number two. Number three. And number four. Now we will do one of our double crochets. Remember our double crochets are all worked by dropping down two rows below and picking up that front loop that was left. So we're going to work one double crochet. Now we will work one single crochet. Followed by one double crochet. Now we will end our repeat by doing three single crochets over these next three stitches. That ends our repeat for this round. So our repeat began over here and we did four single crochets, one double crochet, one single crochet, one double crochet, three single crochets to end the repeat. So you're just gonna start that repeat back over and keep working on around until you're ready to join. So the repeat begins again with four single crochets. One, two, three, four, one double crochet, one single crochet in the very next stitch and one double crochet. Now three single crochets to end the repeat. One, two, and three. So please pause here and come back when you've completed the rest of your round and are ready to join. So here we are at the end of round number three. We're about to move on to round four. So we need to close off this round. Again, you have your chain one that you're ignoring. We're not gonna look at that. 
we are going to go right here to the first stitch. If you take a look in front of your work, you'll see this isn't really a stitch. And we're going to go right there into the back loop. I'm going to do this 10 times over because I'm on camera. <laughs> so now we're into it. So at this point, we're going to bring color A over here to the left. And we will be picking up color B and grabbing and pulling that on through. Now we go to the back side of our work and we just give a little tug on color A so that we can tighten everything down and have a nice seamless little join. Now with color B, we're gonna begin doing the repeat for this round. And the repeat for this round is gonna be five single crochets, one double crochet, four single crochets. So we begin with our first single crochet right here in the same stitch that we slip stitched into. So we go right in there and do a single crochet. Well, we need to chain one first. That's what I like to do anyway. And then single crochet. And now we are gonna complete four more back loop single crochets for a total of five. So there's two, three, four, and five. Now we double crochet right here into this stitch. Just slide down two rows below. I am splitting my yarn like crazy. Sorry about that guys. We're going to do that one more time. And now we end the repeat by doing four single crochets. Two, three, and four. So now I'm going to give you a little tip. For this entire round, you're basically just doing your single crochet all the way up until you get the, to this spot right here. That's where your double crochet is gonna go. So you don't have to worry so much about counting on this row because we know this is our signal when we have these two double crochets, we're gonna double crochet in the center of them. So you can pause here, meet back up with me when you are ready to close off the end of round four and begin round five. We're back at the end of round number four. We're gonna go ahead and close off this round. So just like before, we ignore that chain. We go right there into the top of the single crochet, back loop only. And at this point, we're gonna bring color B over here to the side and we're going to pick up color A and we want to slip stitch using color A so that we can move on for round five. Give color B a little tug in the back there, not too much of a tug, but a little bit of a tug so that you can kind of tighten it all down. So now our repeat for row number five or round five is going to be five single crochets. I'm sorry, four single crochets, <laughs> one double crochet, one single crochet, one double crochet, three single crochets. So we're gonna start that by doing chain one and back into this very first stitch to do our single crochet. So we need to do this a total of four times. So there's one, here's two, three, and four. And now we are going to double crochet. And I'm getting all twisted up with all this yarn. We will double crochet right here into this very next stitch, dropping down two rows below. Remember, they're all in the front loop. There's double crochet. Now we single crochet and then we double crochet. Now to end round five's repeat, we do three single crochets. One, two, and three. And that ends the repeat for round five. So the repeat started over here with four single crochets, one double crochet, one single crochet, one double crochet, three single crochets. 
But here's another little trick. Same thing as before, we basically are just framing out around the double crochet from the previous row. So you single crochet all the way up until you have this space right here in front of this double crochet from the previous row. That's where we're gonna double crochet. Single crochet on top and then double crochet on the other side. Then it's single crochets all the way till we get to the next one. So that's just a little cheater for those of you who want to cheat and not have to count so much on these first few rows. You can pause here and meet back up with me when you are ready to move on to round number six. So here we are, round five is ending. So we need to slip stitch to the first stitch in the row, ignoring this chain that we did to start our first single crochet. And we just go right there into that first stitch. Now we're gonna allow color A to fall over here to the left. And we're going to pick up color B and we are going to slip stitch on through. Now we can go here to the back side of our work. And as you can see, the way that we're doing this, we are having a nice little seam inside there. Everything's being held down. So we're gonna grab color A and just give it a tug, just to tighten that down in case our loop got a little bit big. And now for round six, we're gonna begin with five single crochets one double crochet, four single crochets. So let's do that together. Very first stitch right here that we slip stitched into, we're gonna chain one and go back into that stitch and complete our single crochet. And now we are going to do that a total of five times. So we've got two, three, four, and five. Now we double crochet and we do four single crochets to end the repeat for this round. So one, two, three, all worked in that back loop and four. So that ends our repeat. So our repeat began over here with five single crochets, one double crochet, four single crochets. And again, we can cheat a little bit on this one. We're doing single crochets all the way up until we get right here where we're gonna be dropping our double crochet in. So you don't have to count. <laughs> you can just keep working all the way around. Just don't miss your double crochet right there in, in the center of that. And so pause here and we'll be back when you're ready to move on to round number seven. We're here at the end of round six. We're gonna join on for round number seven, or we're gonna move on to round seven. <laughs> I'm having a day. So we've been working in color B, and we need to bring that over here to the side. So I just bring it underneath my crochet hook. I don't know if I showed that very well before. So bring it over here, out of my way, under my crochet hook. And now here, already joined on in the back, is color A. And so round seven is gonna be worked in color A. So you just grab color A and we just slip stitch on through. Now we're able to give just a slight little tug on color B just to make sure we've got a nice tight little join. So now we're gonna begin the repeat for round seven and that begins with three single crochets one double crochet, three single crochets, one double crochet, two single crochets. So we're gonna do all that together. So our repeat begins now. I like to chain one. We're gonna go back into that very first stitch, same one we slip stitched into, and that does our first single crochet. We've gotta do a total of three. There's one, here's two, and here's number three. Now we are going to do a double crochet right here into the very next stitch, sliding down, picking up that front loop. There's one double crochet. 
Now we need to do three single crochets over the next three stitches. So there's one, here's two, and here is number three. Now we will do one double crochet right here. And we end this repeat by doing two single crochets over these next two stitches. And then we'll recap all that. So our repeat began over here when we did three single crochets, then we did one double crochet, three single crochets, one double crochet, two single crochets. So again, a little cheater kind of reference point we're going to be doing all of our double crochets right here, framing just beside the previous double crochets in the same color. So you'll be working along doing single crochets and you double crochet, single crochet across, and then double crochet right beside. So you're going to go into the stitches right beside these double crochets. So you don't have to count if you do that. <laughs> so pause here and we'll be back for round number eight. We're back at the end of round seven. I've inserted into the back loop only of the first single crochet that we did in this round. So we've gone into that stitch, just insert it in. Now we're going to take the color that we've been working with, which was color A, and we're gonna bring it over here out of our way for a moment. Now we're gonna pick up color B this time. And by doing it this way, we're crossing over and keeping everything nice and tight. So we're going to grab color B and slip stitch on through. Now we can give a little tug on color A just to tighten that down and we can begin working the repeat now for row around eight. We're going to chain one. We're going to be doing four single crochets to start this round. So we chain one. We go back down here into that same exact stitch that we slip stitched into and finish our first single crochet. Now we need to repeat this three more times. So we have a total of four. So there's number two. Here's number three and number four. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here into this next stitch. Now we will do one single crochet right here into this next stitch and one double crochet right here into this very next stitch. Now we're going to do three single crochets to finish up the repeat for round eight. So there's one, here's two, and here is number three. So let's recap that repeat. We started over here and we did four single crochets one double crochet, one single crochet, one double crochet, three single crochets. So you're going to keep repeating that same set of stitches all the way around. For those of you who want a cheater, um, <laughs> cheater explanation, we're going to single crochet all the way over. And then we're going to do our double crochet right here on the other side, on the left side of this double crochet from the previous row. Then we single crochet and then double crochet right here on the right side of this double crochet. So we're just putting our double crochets framing in here with a single crochet in the center. So you can work on down the rest of your row and we'll meet back up when you're ready to join round eight and move on to round number nine. We are here at the end of round eight. We're gonna join and then we're going to be moving on up for round number nine. So we need to move color B that we've been working in over here to the left side and pick up color A because that's what we're gonna be working our next round in. Now we slip stitch on through just like so. And we are able to give a little tug on our previous color, color B, so that we can tighten it down. Now for round nine, we're going to start out by doing two single crochets. 
So right here in the same stitch, we're going to do our first single crochet, but I like to chain one and then back into here to do our first single crochet in the back loop. And we need to do a second right there in the back loop. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here into this very next stitch. We will do two single crochets over the next two stitches. There's one and here's two. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here. Two single crochets over the next two stitches. One and two. One double crochet right here. And then we're going to end the repeat for round nine by doing one single crochet right here in the very next stitch. That ends our repeat. So let's recap that. We started over here with two single crochets, one double crochet, two single crochets, one double crochet, two single crochets, one double crochet, one single crochet. So you're going to keep working in that exact same manner and you can start to see our shape is forming finally. So you can keep working on down the rest of your round and then we'll meet back up when you are ready to end round nine and move on to round 10. We are joining at the end of round nine and about to move on to round 10. So I've already inserted to the first stitch into the back loop only. So we're going right there in that first single crochet of this round. Now we're going to take the yarn that we've been working with. So we've been working in color A. We're going to bring that on over here underneath my hook over here to the left side. Now we will grab up color B because round ends worked in color B. So we're going to slip stitch on through. There we go. And on through. Now we can come back here at the back side and we can give color a, a little tug just to kind of tighten that down a little bit. And we'll begin round 10 by doing three single crochets working in that back loop. So I'm going to chain one, go back down into this first stitch, do my first single crochet. Here's number two, and here's number three. Now we will do one double crochet right here into this next stitch. One double. Now we will do one or a total of three single crochets over the next three stitches. There's one, two, and three. Now we'll do one double crochet. And we will do two single crochets to end the repeat for this round. One and two. So let's recap that repeat. We began over here with three single crochets, one double crochet, three single crochets, followed by two single crochets to end the repeat. So you're just going to keep working that same exact set of stitches over and over on down the rest of your round and meet back up with me when you're ready to join round 10 and move on to round 11. We are here at the end of the round and we're ready to join round 10 so we're going to be ignoring this little stitch right here this is the chain one we did we're going to ignore that and make sure that we go into the back loop of our actual first stitch so we just hop into there now we can take color b and move it over here to the left side and we will now grab up color a because we're going to begin working in color a so you're going to grab that up and slip stitch on through. And then we can come back here to the back side of our work and give a little tug on color B so that we can get that nice and tight. So now color, or I'm sorry, row 11 begins <laughs> in color A. And we're going to do a single crochet followed by a double crochet. So let's get started on that. We're going to chain one, go right back down into the same first stitch. Do our single crochet. Now we need to do a double crochet. We 
we're going to do three single crochets over these next three stitches. One, two, and three. Now we will do three double crochets. Oh, I'm sorry, we're doing two stitches. Two single crochets. I'm very, very sorry. Two singles. Now we're going to do three doubles right here. Here's one. Here's two. And here is three. So three of our drop downs right in a row. Now we're going to do two single crochets. One and two. And our repeat's going to end with one double crochet right here. This very next stitch. So let's recap that repeat. It began over here with one single crochet, followed by one double crochet, then two single crochets, three double crochets, two single crochets, one double crochet. And we're just going to keep repeating that on down the rest of our row. And we'll be meeting back up when you're ready to move on to row number 12 or round 12. back here at the end of round 11 and we are going to go ahead and do our slip stitch to join so we're going to bring color a that we've been working in over here to the left side we're going to come back here and pick up color b and we're going to do a slip stitch on through both of those loops just like so and then give a little tug on color a just to tighten that down a bit now we're going to begin round 12 and round 12 begins with two single crochets so we're going to chain one and go right back here into the same stitch that we slip stitched into and do our single crochet there's one and here's number two try not to split your yarn <laughs> two now we will do one double crochet right here into the next stitch And we will do five single crochets across this section right here. So we're going to go right into the very next stitch and begin doing our single crochets. So here's one, two, three, four, and five. Now we need to do one double crochet and we're going to end the repeat for round 11 or 12 I mean with one single crochet. So let's recap that repeat. We started over here with two single crochets, one double crochet, five single crochets, one double crochet, and we end with one single crochet. So we're just going to keep working an exact same set of stitches all the way around We'll meet back up when you're ready to move on to round 13. We are back and we are about to move on to round number 13, but I just wanted to show you what your work is looking like at this point. So we're going to go back over here to the join and we're going to be picking up color A this time. So we need to go here into the top back loop of the first single crochet and now we're going to bring color B around here to the front out of our way and we'll pick up color A grab and do a slip stitch ta-da and ta-da now we can give a little tug on color B just to tighten that down and we're going to begin working the repeat for row 13 or round 13 now so we're going to chain one going to do a double crochet right here so I've chained one and I'm going to do a double crochet immediately dropping down two rows below picking up that bump and we complete one double crochet for the start of row round 13 now we're going to do 
two single crochets over the next two stitches. So here's one. And here is two. Now we're going to do a total of five of our double crochets all the way across this section. So here we are. We're going to begin doing double crochets now. So there's one. Number two. Number three. Number four. And number five right here. Now we will do two single crochets to end our repeat in the next two stitches. There's one and here is number two. So that ends the repeat for round 13. So we're gonna recap that. Our repeat began with one double crochet. We did two single crochets, five double crochets, and two single crochets. So you're gonna keep working that exact same manner all the way down, starting over again with a double crochet. Two single crochets. One and two. Five double crochets. One. Here is number two. Sorry, my dog decided to get up. Here is number three. Number four. Number five. And then again, our repeat's gonna end with two of our single crochets over the next two stitches, one and two. So you can pause here and keep working that same exact set of stitches over and over on down the rest of your row. And we'll meet back up when you're ready to join round 13 and begin round 14. So we are here at the end of row 13 and we're going to slip stitch and bring up color B this time. So we need to move color A over here out of our way and go back here in the inside, pick up color B and perform our slip stitch. One and two. And now we just need to give a little tug on color A just to tighten that down. And we can begin now the round 14 repeat. So for round 14, our repeat is going to begin with two single crochets. First one, of course, has worked right here in the very first stitch. So I'm going to chain one and go back down into that same stitch that we slip stitched in. There's one and here is two. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here in this next stitch. followed by five single crochets right across this section here. So we're gonna go right here into the very next stitch. There's one, two, three, four, and five. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here into this very next stitch. Oops. And our repeat will end with one single crochet right here in the very next stitch. So let's recap that repeat. Our repeat began over here with two single crochets. We did one double crochet, five single crochets, one double crochet, and we end the repeat with one single crochet. So we're gonna keep working that exact same set of stitches all the way around and meet back up for round 15. We are back and we are ready to join round 14 and move on to round 15. So inserted here into the very first stitch, single crochet, or there in the back loop of that stitch, we're going to bring color B over here to the left side out of our way 
and we're now going to pick up color A and do our slip stitch. Da -da -da. And now we'll tug B and start working in color A. For row or round 15, I keep wanting to call them rows, we're going to do a single crochet right here in the first stitch. So chaining one, going back in and doing a single crochet. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here into this very next stitch. Followed by two single crochets over the next two stitches. There's one and here's number two. Now we're going to do three double crochets over these next three stitches. So here's one, two, and three. Now we'll do one single crochet right here, or I'm sorry, two single crochets total. There's one there, one here, so two single crochets. And now we will end the repeat with one double crochet. So let's recap that repeat. Our repeat began over here with one single crochet, then we did one double crochet, two single crochets, three double crochets, two single crochets, one double crochet. So you're going to keep repeating that same set of stitches on down the rest of your round and we'll meet back up when you're ready to join and move on to round 16. We are now beginning round 16. I've already joined my row um, 15 and tightened everything down and brought up color B this time. We're going to begin this row by doing three single crochets. So I'm going to chain one and go back into this first stitch. Working one single crochet. Here's my second. And here is my third. Now I'm going to do one double crochet right here into this very next stitch. Followed by three single crochets over these next three stitches. Here's one, two, and three. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here in this very next stitch. And we're going to end our repeat with two single crochets over these next two stitches. One and two. So let's recap that repeat. We began over here with three single crochets. We did one double crochet three single crochets, one double crochet, and then two single crochets. So you're going to keep repeating that same set of stitches over and over, and then we'll be meeting back up when you're ready to move on to round number 18. I'm sorry, 17. I'm jumping ahead. <laughs> round 17 is next. We're on 16. Here you go. We are back and we are moving on to round 17 now using color A. I've already joined just as I've shown you to do a whole bunch more. So I don't think you guys need to see that anymore. So now we're going to begin round 17's repeat. So we're going to be chaining up one and doing a single crochet right here into the same stitch we slip stitched into. And we're going to do a second single crochet right here in the very next stitch. So two single crochets. Now one double crochet. We're going to do two single crochets over the next two stitches, one and two. And we're going to do one double crochet right here in the center. Followed by two single crochets, one and two. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here, very next stitch. And we're going to end our repeat with one single crochet right here in the very next stitch. 
So we're going to recap that repeat. We started over here with two single crochets. We did one double crochet, two single crochets, one double crochet, two single crochets, one double crochet. We end the repeat with one single crochet. So you're going to keep working that same exact set of stitches on around and we'll meet back up for row number 18 and it's round, not a row. <laughs> we'll be back in just a moment. We are back and we are now beginning round 18. We're working in color B, so that's the gold color for me. We're going to begin by doing four single crochets. So I'm chaining one, going back into this first stitch and doing my first single crochet right there. Now we're going to do number two, number three, and number four. Now we're going to double crochet right here in the next stitch, followed by one single crochet, one double crochet into the next stitch, and then we're going to end the repeat for this round by doing three single crochets over these next three stitches, two and three. So we're going to recap our repeat for this row began over here with four single crochets, one double crochet, one single crochet, one double crochet, and three single crochets. So a cheater note for this one is you're basically doing your single crochets all the way up until you get to this stitch and you want to place a double crochet right before it, single crochet on top of it, double crochet immediately following this double crochet from the previous row. So you're going to keep working in that exact same manner on down the rest of your row and we will be meeting back up to do row number 19 in just a moment. We're back for round number 19 and I have already slip stitch and joined on picking up color A this time for round 19. Round 19's repeat begins by doing three of our single crochets. So just as we've been doing, we're going to start right here in the first stitch with a single crochet. And then we're going to repeat that two more times for a total of three. There's number three for me. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here. We're going to do three single crochets working across the top. So we're at our diamond shape. Three single crochets. One, two, and three. Now we're going to do one double crochet right here in this very next stitch. And then we end our repeat by doing two single crochets in these next two stitches. One and two. So let's recap that repeat. We start over here with three single crochets. We do one double crochet, three single crochets, one double crochet, and two single crochets. So you're going to keep working on down that same exact manner, and you'll just be doing your single crochets across. And when you get to this section here, that's where your double crochets go. So you're going to do a double crochet. So it's the diamond. When we get to the top of that, double crochet here, three across, double crochet immediately following. So we're just framing around these two double crochets from the previous row, if that helps you out with the amount of counting that you have to do. So please pause here, meet back up with me when you are ready to complete row number 20, which is gonna be our last row. We are back and we are now working row around 20. I keep wanting to call them rows. <laughs> so we are gonna begin I've already slip stitched and joined on, bringing up color B this time. We're going to begin with five single crochets. So working immediately in the same stitch, there's my first single crochet. Here's number two, number three, number four, and number five. And then we've made it to this point in our diamond shape, we're going to do a double crochet right here in that center. And then we're going to do four single crochets to finish up our repeat for this final round. Two, three, and four. 
So let's recap that repeat. We are going to start our repeat over by doing five single crochets, one double crochet that is right there, dead center of our diamond shape. And then we end the repeat with the four single crochets. So cheater version of this is you're gonna single crochet all the way across until you get to the center of the diamond and that is the one place you do your double crochet. So we are going to work on around and we will meet back up. We'll talk about uh, moving up for additional repeats of the pattern as well as a finishing round for this if you're gonna turn it into a notions bag if you work directly along with me. And we'll be back in just a moment. We are back. Row 20 is done on my um, piece in front of you right here. And we're going to talk about finishing. Since I'm going to turn this into a notions bag for myself, I'm actually going to go back and rewind to row three. And I'm going to complete rows three, four, and five so that I have the lengthened portion of the diamond up at the top, just like there is down here at the bottom. For those of you who are making a bigger project, like a throw pillow, for instance, you're going to rewind back to row three as well, but you'll be completing row three, rounds three through 20, as many times as you want to complete your project. The same will be for those of you who are doing something like a bag, a tote, um, things along those lines. So you'll just be repeating rows or rounds three, through 20 as many times as you want. If you're making a notions pouch like me, you are only going to worry about row three, four, and five. And that will give us this section down here, up here at the top, so that it is nice and even. And then you can add a zipper and sew up the bottom of the pouch. And keep in mind, the row start times are all down in the description with a lot of extra information. If I didn't say that in the beginning of the video, just hop down there and you can find the row start time for where you need to rewind to all down in the description. So here I have finished up what I need for my notions pouch. I completed row, after row 20, I completed row three, four, and five right there. So I just finished out the top three, four, and five. And that finished up, so I have a nice even look to the bottom and top. And then up here, I just did a simple round of the back loop only single crochets just to finish it off so that the width up here is similar to the width that I have down here at the start of the work. So I think it's looking pretty good. So the next thing I'm gonna do is select a zipper in my case I have selected this one right here. These are the Coates and Clark, I believe. I know it says Coates right there. Polyester zipper. This is the 17 inch. And I got this one in Nile green. It's kind of like a mint green is the best way to describe it. I know it's probably not showing up true to color because I know my nails aren't. So um, it's an all purpose zipper though. I selected this just because it was one of the cheaper ones. Um, zippers, as I found out from trying to make these Notion pouches, are very expensive. So I grabbed up several in different sizes when I was in the store and just grabbed up different ones that I thought I might would need. And so now all I'm going to do is attach the zipper at the top here on the inside. And I'll show you real quick we are just slightly bigger than what I'd like it to be to attach it because I don't want to have a gap down here where things can fall out or up here. So all I'm going to do at this point is turn my work inside out, making sure I know where my top is and where my bottom is because that's going to be important. So what I'm going to do is make sure that I'm working at the top and that's just because it finishes out just a little bit different than the bottom but it's close enough in size. So I'm gonna take my yarn that I've been using in the color I finished in. So for me, this is color A, and I'm going to begin working in these little loops right here. So let me bring my camera down for you. So the loops that I'm gonna work in, it's just these little back bumps right here, and I'm going to just do single crochets all the way around. And that will give me a little bit, 
it'll bring it in just a little bit without changing the overall size of the project. It will bring it in enough though so that I can work my zipper on and I'm just going to sew it. So there's nothing fancy about that and I'm not even sure I, I'm doing it how I do it. <laughs> I can't tell you if it's the correct way or not, but we're just going to work around these little back bumps doing a single crochet all the way around. Hopefully you can see where I'm working into. And that's just going to bring in just a little bit. So my zipper will kind of sit down in there. And I don't have to do like a round of reducing. And then at the bottom, I'm just going to sew up the bottom. So I'm sure you guys don't need to see that. But you'll do this all the way around on the inside. And it'll give us that little edge. And then I'm going to be attaching the zipper right there. So we'll come back when I am ready to start sewing on the zipper to give you guys an idea of how I do that. So hopefully you can see which loop I'm going into. If you're wanting to follow along right with me right here in this next one. So we'll be back in just a moment. So what I've done here is I've completed stitching all the way around on the inside of the bag. It's created this little lip and as you can see right here when I come around to this side because of how I am going to have the zipper down here I just wanted a little extra wiggle room so I did not slip stitch and join this together but you definitely can if that's what you prefer it's really all about what do you prefer now down here on the bottom while still turned inside out I have done a row of single crochets all the way around and I did slip stitch and join those and then picking up the outer loop on each side of the project. So the, there's a rim around here of single crochets. Once you complete that, I picked up the outer loop and joined it to the outer loop. And then I did a slip stitch to join. So I think that's pretty self-explanatory and you don't need to see that. Join your bottom. I like to do it this way because when I turn it inside out, it looks really pretty. And I will show you that now. So that's why I did that. It gives that really pretty clean bottom edge. So now at this point, we are going to turn the entire project back out, right side facing out again. And we're going to select our zipper and begin to join the zipper. So I'm not an experienced um, sewer by any means. So if you have a better way to do this, Feel free to do it however you want. I'm just going to do a quick demonstration to show you what I did to join my zipper. If you don't need this, you can go ahead and skip this part of the video. And based on the instructions on the little leaflet or insert inside, what I saw was it looks like when it's being sewn with a sewing machine, you have the zipper, you're opening the zipper. So I just went ahead and opened mine and I found that that was a lot easier to work with. So for me, I have a definite side that I want my actual zipper head to be at. And all we have to do is kind of figure out where do we need to position it. At this point, you can pin it if you want to pin it. But once we line it up appropriately, you're going to see that you are able to sew with the new lip that we created by doing the single crochet on the inside and have a nice clean edge. So you can start at one end of the project. So in my case, I'm gonna start down here at this end and I'm going to show you real quick the type of needle I used. So let me do it like this. I do not know what this is called, but it actually flares out and it's pointy. So this is not a blunt end needle, but it did come in a pack of, you know, blunt end needles that I purchased. I purchased like a multi-pack at like Walmart or something like that. So the main thing you're wanting to do at this point is just make sure that everything's lining up the way you want it to. So before you begin to sew, this is why the pins come in handy. I didn't bring mine, <laughs> so I'm not going to pin it, but... Pinning it would be a great idea at this point. Just make sure you like the exact position. Make sure you're going to have room to sew everything. In my case, it lines up perfectly. I have exactly what I want. 
So I sewed, I came in from the back side, picking up this back loop. You of course can go through as many loops as you want, but you need some yarn on there so that we can begin to sew. So we're gonna do that real quick. And we're back with yarn on. So at that point, all I'm doing is pulling it up. I then move and making sure I'm keeping the same distance right here. This is what you wanna check. You wanna keep the same amount of space from the edge of the zipper to the top of the stitch. And I'm not stretching anything. I'm just going right here from this over here to this one. So bringing it up that up into the camera. So I go right here to the very next. Insert in. You wanna hold your zipper kind of firm. And I pull back. Just kind of watching my space. Make sure that you get enough yarn so that you don't have any issues with your yarn length. And you just go from one to the next. So nothing crazy, no special tools really required. And you just sew in each and every loop all the way around. Then you'll do the other side and you will be complete with a gorgeous little makeup pouch or notions pouch. You can put whatever you want in here. You could use the same technique if you are doing pillows and you're doing more of like a pillow cover where you're wanting to be able to take it off to wash. I know that that's a must in my house. Gotta be able to wash everything. So instead of doing buttons, you can easily install a zipper. These zippers were purchased at Joann's and they were about, they ran between $2.99 to $3.49. So again, the only thing I'm really paying attention to is the distance between this part and this part trying to keep that as even as possible and on the inside it's not going to be super pretty unless you keep it really straight to me this is okay if you're going to sell something like this you might want to crochet along in here just to kind of hide that but it's completely up to you so i appreciate you guys as always for watching i hope that you found this video to be helpful i hope you enjoyed learning this particular pattern right here and make sure that you're subscribed if you are enjoying these tutorials so you never miss a Mosaic Monday. I do try my best to get the videos out on Monday. Sometimes that doesn't happen just with technical difficulties and such. So, you know, bear with me. If you don't see it on Monday, you will see it someday that week. I rarely ever have missed a week on uploading these. So, till next time, bye for now.